All right, welcome to Hockey from Home, brought to you by Kemba Financial Credit Union. I'm Bob McElligot, and this season is a special one for the Blue Jackets because we are celebrating the 20th anniversary season of Blue Jackets hockey. And as we bring up or bring back some alumni, it makes sense to bring back the guy that was the first ever draft pick, the first first round pick of the Blue Jackets is with me today, and that is former defenseman Rustislav Klesla. Rusty, it's so good to see you. It's uh, It's been a long time. I think the last time I talked to you, it was after you got traded to uh, Arizona. I think they were the Phoenix Coyotes then. That's how long ago it was. So it's been quite some time, buddy. Good to see you again. Uh, uh, thanks for the welcome, Bob. Uh, it's good to see you too. And you're right. Yeah. Uh, uh, your first year was my last year in, uh, in, in Columbus, but uh, that's how it goes. Uh, and it's been a while, but uh, uh, the memories uh, and the uh, 20 years it's it's a while so i think it's uh, it's uh, it's a bit of a uh, bit of a history now but uh, uh, some memories are definitely still in me well it's funny how life goes because time never seems like uh, it was that long ago when you look at things but for you does it seem that long ago to look all the way back to the year 2000 when you joined this team when it first came into existence uh, well, it, <clears throat> to be honest, uh, it doesn't really seem that it's been 20 years. To be honest, that's, uh, it's, it's crazy that, you know, uh, time flies, uh, as I would say. But, uh, <clears throat> it, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, when, you know, now with kids and all uh, th stuff that's going on, uh, that, uh, you know, you just don't have really time to slow down yet. So you don't really uh, look uh, at it's been that while, but I, I think when the time comes, which may be soon, you know, when the kids will be older and you just won't have that much to do, I guess, you know, then you will have the memories uh, bring up and uh, then you're gonna open up the old newspapers and old stories and kind of, uh, I'm not there yet. That's why maybe uh, it's, uh, it's still, uh, it feels like uh, it's just been, you know, last year pretty much sometimes. Right. Hey, I want to talk to you about when you first came over here, though, from the Czech Republic, because you came over and you actually played in the USHL, and then you went to Brampton and played before you got drafted by the Blue Jackets. Do you remember back to being so young and, you know, leaving home and coming all the way over to North America? Uh, was that challenging for you? I I'm sure as a hockey player it was exciting, but also challenging, isn't it, to leave your family and do all that stuff? Yeah, Bob, uh, definitely. I was actually uh, talking about that uh, 20 years ago. I was actually talking to some friends about this experience and uh, uh, about like me being 16 year old coming to North America when, you know, I could, I could call my parents uh, once every two weeks. <laughs> I remember that that was, uh, you know, this, which is unheard of, of uh, what we got now and we can you know talk like this uh so that was really that was really tough and my you know english and the language was not you know nearly uh what it should be uh but my dream was that uh, my dream to play uh nhl was like that uh, strong that uh i just had to uh i had to kind of uh put everything I had to, uh, to do and play uh, hockey, the sport that I loved. And uh, for, for me, come to North America, I thought I'm closer to NHL. I'm in America now playing USHL and I'm closer to NHL. I'm closer to my, uh, to my dream. Obviously that was still a lot of work, you know, uh, to be done. But uh, that's what I kind of uh, had my mindset kind of, you know, this is what I want to do. And, I'm not afraid and I want to do uh, all this stuff to be closer to my dream. And that's why I came and uh, there was different style of hockey. Uh, the, the players were so much older than I was, uh, but you know, I kind of uh, fought and learned the, you know, the language, uh, learned the style, learn even the lifestyle of, you know, North American people. And it was just so much easier than when the plan was then to come to, uh, you know, OHL or, you know, Brampton myself. And uh, that was my draft year, which uh, kind of uh, set me up 
and I felt more comfortable uh, and I felt confident that, you know, uh, as a player to, again, be a better player, be, uh, uh, know uh, the style which, uh, you know, USA and, and Canada for our standpoint is not that much different. I'm sure for American and Canadian people, there's always probably some uh, stuff that are different, but from a boy uh, from Czech Republic uh, was not that much of a difference. So for me coming to Canada in my draft year, was huge that I had that one year under my belt uh, with the North American experience. You will forever be the answer to a trivia question, obviously, being the first first round pick of the Blue Jackets. But, you know, the fact that you hold that, I, nobody can ever take that title away from you, Rusty. And do you take great pride in the fact that when this franchise started, the first draft pick they made, they called your name? Uh, sure it is. You know, obviously when, uh, you play and you're like second season, third, fifth, 10th, whatever, uh, it's, or even when you still play, uh, uh, active, then you just don't realize that. But once the years, uh, come and are, you know, coming, then, um, uh, it, it has, you know, and I, I'm, I'm proud that, uh, back then it was a new organization, you know, that was, everything was new. Everybody was learning, you know? Uh, but now I think with 20 years under the belt, and I think, which I'm happy for, the, the Blue Jackets came big time on the map. You know, that, you know, last uh, few years are in the playoffs and are really a good contender, which is, uh, which is great, which, you know, that sometimes uh, um, I uh, always, when I think of that, it was kind of missing, you know, I kind of... Um, I don't have a good feeling about that, you know, when I was there 10 years, one, one time playoffs. Uh, but I'm happy that it happened. It, it is now. Uh, and the Blue Jackets are contender every season. Uh, but back to your question, it is uh, so it is a honor to be that first guy that was drafted and it always will be. You know, I think it's mostly for media and some kind of stats, which uh, can be misleading sometimes, but it is, it, it is the history. And it, it, it's just like that, just like you say. So it's something that I don't know if, uh, obviously I would be okay. Well, we won the cup in 2000, but, uh, the first draft, uh, draft, uh, ever for blue jackets, it's, it's, it's good. And I, I, I'm happy, you know, I, uh, I'm happy how it went, how it started. It could turn, you know, a million different ways, uh, uh, wrong you know, or better, but I'm happy with uh, what happened and what it was. What do you remember about the beginning? Because, I mean, you guys were a major league hockey team coming to a college football town, but there was so much excitement and the building was packed every night. And really, Rusty, as you know, back then, the result of the game didn't really matter when it came to people wanting to be there and wanting to just be a part of this new thing that was in town. What do you remember as being a young kid and, and just uh, the energy in the building and, and the people that you interacted with around town that were so excited to have an NHL franchise in Columbus? Uh, yeah, it's uh, exactly like you're saying. Uh, it was something new and, uh, you know, myself or even, uh, you know, my teammates back then could feel that hype, you know, in that arena, in the city, you know, in, uh, uh, you know, all over, uh, whenever we uh, went somewhere, you know, everybody was supporting and was happy that the team is there. And uh, it's, uh, uh, I think, like uh, 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 before, a little bit we lost it after a couple of years, you know, then, uh, you know, the results were not coming. Obviously, it kind of went a little bit, it slipped a little bit away, but uh, still the people, the fans were excited. The arena is great, uh, was great. You know, it was, it was loud and we could really, uh, you know, feel the energy. And I think even for Ohio or whatever, for Columbus, is was just great to have a team uh, in a city like that. You know, I think it's, uh, it's a great city. It was a great city for me as a 18 year old and a 19 year old. Uh, you kind of think of a little bit different things than, you know, the big impact of what it means for Ohio or what it means for Columbus as a city. But uh right now uh as as i think of uh what it meant for the people it was great you know you could see everybody wanted to go to games everybody was cheering when we won 
And I think even the, the first season was, uh, for some surprise, uh, that uh, it went pretty well. You mentioned that one of the biggest disappointments, if not the biggest, was only getting to the playoffs one time in the time that you were here. But let's go back to the day you got traded to the Coyotes. Um, how difficult was that day for you to leave the franchise that drafted you that you had stayed with for so long? I mean, we're talking about 2011 now at the trade deadline when you get sent out to Arizona. What, uh, what do you remember about that day and leaving the Blue Jackets and going somewhere else? Uh, well, uh, that day, I think um, after 10 seasons, and uh, this is uh, when I look at it back, um, um, yeah, we were on a Canadian trip. I was in Vancouver, and uh, there was a trade deadline. That was the last day, and uh, the big hype. And, uh, you know, I got a call uh, from it was Scott Housen back then. Right. You know, come to his room. So I was, uh, I knew what's going on, you know, but that was the first time uh, because I was 10 years with the same team. Uh, and, uh, but uh, then, you know, he said, well, you've been, you got traded here for, to, to Arizona, Phoenix back then. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, well, okay. Uh, and I, to be honest, on that trip, I packed a little bit more stuff. <laughs> you could just feel it in their bones, you know, uh, as, <clears throat> as it is. And, uh, you know, and it is as much as I uh, love Columbus and I felt like home and everything after 10 seasons. And I think maybe even the team felt it. I think that was the time when uh, it's been, it was a time to go different ways, you know. And uh, uh, when I look at it back, it was good for both sides, probably, you know. Uh, you know, uh, I think <clears throat> the team needed to change, maybe needed to go some other ways I needed to, you know, change, uh, maybe go some other place. So this is what I remember that line, but, uh, you know, always I say, well, it was, it was great 10 years. I love Columbus uh, from hockey standpoint, from family standpoint, from, you know, uh, that city is kind of close even to, you know, you got four seasons there, you know, same at home. So it was kind of, you just have it, you felt, you feel like it, it, it's your it's your second home, but to that day, I remember that you know that's that was just uh, sometimes a player feels it, and uh, this is what this is what happened. You know, I was uh, when I was packing for whatever three games we played there, and then I was like, well, let's bring, let's let's do a couple couple more shirts just in case. So, and uh, it was like that. But I say it's just part of hockey, and and uh, it's a normal thing. And when whenever I. Uh, put my memories to that. I say, well, it was it was good for both sides, and that's uh, that's hockey. That's how it is. Yeah, you're right. At that time, it, it was time for a complete reset. I think for for everybody, the team had gone to the playoffs and then thought it was going on an upward motion, and the bottom kind of fell out of it. And uh, you're right. It was th those were tough times. They were. So you went yeah. out to uh, play for the Coyotes for a couple of seasons. Uh, actually, your rights got traded two more times. So you got traded to Washington. I know you played a couple of games in the American League there. You never played in the NHL again for another franchise and then uh, went over to Czech and played a couple more seasons. When did you know, okay, it, it's time. It's time for me just to, to stop playing this game and, and figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. And you mean in uh, NHL or over? Oh, just – well, just, just whenever, or, or both times. When, yeah, when did you, first of all, when did you feel it was time to go back to Czech Republic? And then when did you feel it was time just to kind of hang it up and find a new career, if you will? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, if I come back uh, to that uh, uh, trade, then uh, uh, it was in uh, Phoenix back then. I had a good time. Good, uh, uh, we had you know, two and a half great seasons there. You know, the team was good. Not many, you know, stars, but uh, working team. Uh, we, we went to playoffs, uh, you know, to, we went to conference finals uh, one year. So I had good memories there too. Uh, and back then, uh, you know, again, the, so I have good memories there too, but the, at the end there, it was kind of a little bit weird of uh, when, uh, the team wanted to rebuild again. And I think 2014 was uh, 13, 14, 15 was uh, that time when the teams not 
uh, only Arizona, but all teams wanted to go younger, wanted to go faster. And that uh, was so evident that the older guys were just uh, uh, starting to leave the league. You know, like uh, there was no, you know, and season after even more, season after even more. So now you got these, uh, you know, uh, great young players uh, on the ice that are, you know, so ready when they come out of draft, when they're 18, 19, and which is uh, really uh, nice to see. It's really uh, great how much work they put when they're younger and in juniors and they come to the league really ready because back then when I was 18, it was only a few guys. Now it's, you know, you could see uh, first two rounds could probably, you know, uh, try to try to play the next year. Uh, you know, but so I, at the end there, I still felt I can play. I could play another two years, but uh, it happened that the team <clears throat> decided to put me on waivers uh, one, one day, you know, out of the blue. And I was like, okay, well, I, uh, this is it. You know, then I came because I <clears throat> didn't, didn't want to, uh, I think it was before Christmas sometimes. I didn't want to like just leave just like that. So I battled, you know, and uh, came back for whatever month. But, you know, the, the line of that team was uh, uh, to go different, you know, young guys and give uh, two younger defensemen a chance. So I kind of uh, uh, end up, uh, you know, maybe playing what, uh, 20 games in the American League and, uh it was then, you know, when I talked to my agent and said, you know, maybe, you know, you probably will, you can come for uh, another year, you know, but the future is unsure, you know, with the young guys coming, uh, you, you will have to either, either play so good, you know, that you will, you know, really uh, be that much better than half of the defensemen, some team, or, but if you play just good, just like you're, you know, uh, plan and be steady and you know my last few years like that but uh, then uh, the team may give a chance to two young defensemen and you may just you know uh, find yourself back in uh, you know whatever ravers or whatever you know so I just didn't want to take the chance at the end and uh, I just decided to go home and uh, play for the for the team like the top team here in Czech and just stay with my you know family here and uh that was kind of the decision that I, I, I made that uh, it was not uh, uh, the risk was too high to, to come uh, to play and not be sure how it's going to end up. So that's why I said, okay, let's just leave, uh, you know, another, another year or another season in NHL and just start playing for, uh, for the Czech team here. I am talking with Rusty Klesla. He was the first draft pick of the Blue Jackets when they came into existence in the year 2000. This is Hockey from Home, brought to you by Kemba Financial Credit Union. And if you would like to ask Rusty a question, it's very easy to do. Go to the bottom of your screen where you see the chats, and you can just type your question into the chat, and uh, then I can ask the question to Rusty. Uh, you just mentioned how the league started to get younger right at the tail end of, of your time in the National Hockey League. When you look at the league today, how much different is this league from when you were coming up as a 20-year-old, 25-year-old? Uh, well, different. Uh, I, like it, I, it's fa faster and more skilled, right? Not, well, not, yeah, yeah. not as much fighting, not as much hitting. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm coming to that. Uh, I, I just want to take it to from a bigger perspective okay. when. Uh, I wanted to say the NHL <clears throat> was and always was the best league uh, in the world, you know, where everybody wants to, wants, wants to go. Uh, and if I say when, when I came 2000, uh, it was a best league that day. But when I look at it now, 2020, you know, 18, 19, whatever, last couple of years, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's faster. It's, uh, uh, it, it was always fast, but now it's that much faster. And the, the, the fourth line, let's say, uh, was back then one, usually two uh, fighters that you just don't really want to uh, be involved with. Uh, and he, now you have on the fourth line uh, three usually skilled guys and maybe some young guys or whatever that maybe could play second, first line back then, you know, with their speed and with uh, – with, uh, their skill 
But the difference is, and I always say that when I talk to some people that the difference now is that the players now are really fast, really skilled. But as I would say, they're not uh, as tough as they could play in 2000 or even 1990. You know, I don't want to say half, no way. But I don't know. I don't want to be like a statistic, but maybe a third of the guys uh, maybe could not be able to play back then because uh, there was just uh, the referees. You know, whenever you look at the whatever, like sometimes uh, now we watch Stanley Cup finals from 99, 2002. Uh, you know, the penalties that were were just uh, not called, you know, for things that now would players uh, be suspended 10, 10 games, 20 games, you know, it was just a different league, even that way. It was that much tougher. So that's why I say these guys are great, but they have the, uh, they, uh, they have all the, uh, with the rules, it's made for speed. It's made for speed, made for skill. Uh, but back then it was usually a big slash, big cross check in front of the net and, you know, next 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 uh, game you couldn't go there because your back was so sore. You just weren't able to do your game because you just had to even battle and 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 a lot of people fight. As now, obviously, it is still tough and it is fast. But uh, and even I say myself when I came in 2000 uh, and it was in 1980, it was probably, it was definitely that much tougher. You know, so I think that's the biggest difference that people sometimes forget. Uh, when they see these these, these young young boys that uh, really fly by, but what would happen if Chris Pronger would uh, you know uh, you know do a huge cross check on right under your neck, or uh, you know all these uh, or Eli Lindros would you know elbow you every other shift in your head, you know as I remember you know as a young guy coming up playing against Eric Lindros and <laughs> it was just tough. It was tough. Uh, you were a target as a young guy. And uh, they could, uh, you know, really uh, use their body a lot more and in a lot and the instrument of a hockey stick a lot more than it is used now. So uh, not everybody could uh, probably play back then, but, uh, you know, heads down what, uh, what uh, guys can do now and how fast and how skilled they are, because it's really nice to see. All right, Rusty, I've got some questions from the fans they want to ask you here. So let me uh, get to some of these and, I've got a couple here, and uh, I'm just going to pick this one out uh, from uh, Kerry Dossman, who says, I've seen a picture of you and a young son a few years ago. How old is he now, and is he interested in hockey? Uh, he's uh, nine years old. He's got the uh, same name, Junior, Rosislav Junior, and uh, uh, he's interested in hockey. But when uh, this situation, COVID, uh, leaves everybody home, uh, a couple months ago, he said he uh, he's, he is not interested in hockey anymore because they just take it away from whatever you know. You could not uh, we could not hear you know train together or even the kids. They just uh, uh, stopped that, so everybody has to be home. You know the kids can't even go to school, uh, which I'm really mad about. Uh, but, you know, he said he doesn't like it uh, because he started loving ping pong. So we got ping pong table in the garage. <laughs> so, uh, and we all play, like the whole family plays ping pong because everybody plays ping pong. So whoever comes, uh, he, he was playing ping pong and all, all of a sudden he just, he loves ping pong. So that helps him maybe overcome that. Uh, he can really go to, to, the, to the practice. But I say, hey, <clears throat> if you feel like that, I'm not going to force you. Uh, if you love ping pong, play ping pong. If you want to go to practice, just uh, the coach, the coach uh, is there. I was helping out with that team too a little bit, uh, you know, this last season. Uh, so if you feel like you want to go to to hockey, maybe he will again. I don't know, but right now he doesn't feel that way. He wants to play ping pong. He's really uh, emotionally with that. So uh, we play ping pong and we now in the garage <laughs> practice ping pong a little bit. But uh, I got a second son. He's three years old and uh, we'll see. He's just starting to, you know, doing whatever, stick, you know, soccer ball, uh, you know, uh, ping pong, obviously, because he sees it. So it's fun, but I don't want to, like, push, uh, you know, my kids to something that they don't feel like to do, even – when I play hockey, it's uh, not the way I wanted to go. I just want them to be happy and do what uh, what they uh, feel like they are happy with. Hey, you know, 
table tennis is an Olympic sport too, Rusty. So right, he could course, still yeah, make it yeah. to the Olympics, right? Of course, yeah, yeah. So I watch it. I I found myself uh, a couple of nights ago. I was flipping through channels. I saw ping pong, and I just <laughs> whoa! I just start watching the. Game. So I watch for an hour. I watch a ping pong match. You know, I'm like, whoa! You know, it's good. Did, did you pick up any moves? Did you get any oh, new moves? Oh no, uh, it, it's interesting. You know, when when we play and we play more and more, you know, then. I'm getting better too, you know, obviously. Uh, so whenever comes somebody and we play tournaments, so uh, he's getting better, obviously, and I'm getting better too. And But when you look at the pro ping pong, it's just sick, you know, what they can do, uh, you know, so much skill. So uh, I think for anybody to go high in any sport is just tough. It's a lot of work, a lot of practice. It's just, uh, it's same everywhere. Right. Um Mac Court has this question. You just mentioned you were doing some coaching, and Mac says you're a coach now. What kind of coach are you? Who do you model yourself as a coach after? And do you think, as a young player, you would have enjoyed playing for John Tortorella, or is he a coach that you would not have liked? Uh, yeah. Well, I was uh, when I start. Uh, I put a couple of years in uh, in the in Czech uh, league, and then I uh, had a year off, and then I came to be like a development development coach to a different team here, which is half hour from me in Ostrava Vitkovice. I was like a development coach there for uh, two seasons or like overall three seasons. But then uh, uh, the third season, I was, you know, working with the top team of the younger players as a kind of trying to develop uh, them and kind of show them the way a little bit, you know, uh, stuff like that. And then uh, the team was not doing right, not doing good. So they fired the coaches and they asked me to coach, you know, as an assistant coach. So I end up being on the bench. Uh, I had a defenseman and, uh, you know, penalty kill. And uh, it was the regulation uh, season. So the last team would end up in the league below. So we end up uh, saving the team in the, in the, uh, in the league, so that was good, but it was a lot of good experience, you know, half season being on the bench, uh, out of nowhere for me, pretty much, because that was not my intention to go pro to, to go coach. Uh, but you know, for the future, uh, good experience, and um, but I didn't want to like do it again because I have two little sons, I kind of want to spend uh, time home, so I just said, okay, uh, I don't want to continue that way, uh, because um. Uh, the miles are were high uh, during the season so i still uh, want to be around my kids a little bit more uh, than you know a hockey coach full time uh, you know has the has the chance to be uh, but uh, to that second part of that question uh, <clears throat> uh, i don't really well, for a coach that I was or I would be, and I try to implant, I try to you know, have uh, that idea on the players, you know, work with them, feel what the potential of the, each player is, and uh, try to uh, bring out that potential. Uh, make sure they do 100% in practice in the, in the game. Uh, you know, work together and and and. Uh, you know, be a professional, you know, on the ice, off the ice. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to, you know, uh, put on those guys. And, uh, you know, every shift matters uh, and stuff like that, which is in NHL, some, it is pretty much normal, you know, but sometimes in different leagues and in Czech, some uh, players have never had that experience of the pressure and of the <clears throat> uh, must have 100% every game every practice and that's something that I think even coach uh, Tortorella is uh, kind of having his impact on the on the team which is great and works great and uh, that takes me to the third part of the question I would love to play under Torts uh, because I like to play under Ken Hitchcock when he was really demanding a coach uh, which is uh, which is which is Torts I always like uh, coaches uh, like that better than um, non-emotional or too much of uh, you know uh, talking you know I like even the emotions when the coaches have those uh, not too much but uh, uh, I think it's uh, I think uh, the Blue Jackets are in good hands and uh, uh, definitely I would I would uh, 
uh, like to uh, you know play under under coach uh, uh, Torch. So you know, but even me, even uh, with the, with the coaching, I think it's still uh, you have to have a lot of experience as a coach. As a player, it's different. You can go to the one point, but working with the with the team, with the individuals, it's uh, brings a lot of. You have to have that kind of a uh, some skill that maybe can you, somebody can really you know teach you. You just have to have it. And some coaches have it, so maybe one day uh, I may be uh, you know be coaching or be uh, with somebody that uh, has. Uh, uh, has an idea to put me there, but you know, I gotta feel it. You know, I just don't want to be going somewhere to, you know, be coaching because I played. It's just uh, at the right time, uh, maybe I would go back coaching, but uh, this is not the time yet for me. All right, Michael would like to know who was the toughest goalie that you faced when you were playing in Columbus? Uh, well, this would be probably a better question for a forward, which would which was facing the. Uh, the goalies uh, more often, uh, but obviously I was uh, facing uh, a lot of good goalies. You know, I mostly I now what uh, brings me to my memories is like the, the the goalies that I scored on. You know, which you know I I whatever I, I scored fifty plus goals uh, in in my career, which I remember who it was against. You know, I remember still you know guys like uh, Vernon. Berdor, Hasek, uh, Longo, and you know a lot of uh, uh, good goalies. Uh, so it's tough to say. You know, there was so many, so so many good goalies that uh, they were good. Uh, even now, you know, that's uh, they're just again so much uh, you know uh, faster and uh, they're you know a little bit they're working I think a little bit differently uh, in the crease. You know that. Uh, that is different, but I'm not a goalie coach. I don't want to already go into that uh, goalie stuff. Uh, but definitely, it's really, for me, tough to say. You know, tough to say. It was a uh, uh, tough uh, goalie was that I, that I thought I can score. And I think I was thinking, oh, this is a goal for sure. And he saved it. So and that, was, that was a lot of them. But from the blue line, it's a little bit tougher, uh, mostly than for the forwards when they go, you know, uh, eye to eye. Not today. Today they let them leave the blue line and go right down to the top of the crease. Oh yeah, I mean back then too, back then too, but not uh, uh, not everybody. You now I think five out of six really are going. You know, back then maybe it was two out of six. You know, so maybe that's the difference too. <laughs> um, let's see. Alex says, Rusty, I'm a Slovak American living in Columbus, and I wanted to let you know that watching a young guy from our part of the world playing for my favorite team was awesome. Thanks for all that you did. Did you enjoy living in Columbus? And what are your favorite parts about the city? Well, thank you. Uh, um, as I uh, mentioned earlier, I really uh, like Columbus and I like the, uh, the lifestyle of, uh, you know, even the people in Columbus. I like uh, the way, you know, they were. Uh, uh, and uh, best parts, well, uh, first, I was living in Gehenna, then I moved a little bit up uh, up north, I think, Black Click. Uh, but we hang out back then in the Eastern a lot, which was kind of a new thing. Uh, you know, I think that Columbus changed so much uh, from 2000 till now, 20 years. I think every city, obviously. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's why, I, I, I'm again, I'm mad at this situation that happened because uh, I thought we would be, you know, personally in Columbus, and I was kind of looking forward to that, uh, you know, go through the city and see how it changed. Uh, but even, you know, downtown, you know, uh, it, uh, I could see how it's changing, you know, through, you know, 2000, 2010, uh, how uh, it's uh, from that, <clears throat> you know, back 2000, from my standpoint of view, it was kind of, <clears throat> kind of like an older looking town like, I mean, downtown and, you know, and the high street and stuff like that. And it was just starting to change so much. <clears throat> and when I played there, you know, even with, in, with Phoenix, it was just every <clears throat> year, it was something new, something different. Uh, you know, but I, I'm, I have good memories, uh, you know, uh, from 
when I play there, when I where I live in you know Black Lake and the Gehenna, it's kind of kind of countryside. Uh, you know, kind of easy going. Uh, you know, part of uh, you know outside of Columbus town. So that's uh, you know good memories. And we kind of and we had a lot of Czech players there. We kind of live close by. So we were, uh, you know, in New Albany. You know, I really like that uh, parts of town there. So. Uh, good memories, you know, a lot of snow in winter, uh, uh, but good memories. Wait till you come back and see what Easton looks like now. I think it's probably twice as big as it was well, when it first yeah, started. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, I'm going to ask you one more here and then I'll let you go. We do appreciate you doing this with us today. Um, uh, this one is which of your former Blue Jackets teammates do you talk to most frequently today? Um, and is that person your best friend from your playing days? Maybe what? Uh, who do you talk to? Uh, well, uh, it's not like I would uh, talk to anybody like every other day or every week. But uh, I would say uh, many times I still uh, keep in touch with Andre Zuko, which was a uh, assistant uh, assistant equipment manager. Uh, he was the you know with uh, Jamie Healy and uh, Team Leroy. Back back in the day, uh, with Jamie, with Jamie here, you know, we uh, uh, shoot a few texts when something happened. When he was in here with the uh, U.S. team in Ostrava, which is close by, which was I think two or three years ago, he was a manager or uh, equipment manager for for that team. So uh, and his wife came, so we invite them to to our house, and uh, it was really cool to see to to have them here. Uh, and from the players. Uh, you know, Jaro, you know, I see, I saw him once, uh, once when every time we play there, uh, David Viborny, you know, here and there, I, uh, uh, you know, shoot a text with him, uh, who else, uh, I saw Ignesh when, uh, the worlds were in Bratislava in Slovakia, uh, so we, uh, you know, had a, had a good, good, uh, good time. Uh, you know, who else? Uh, you know, I see uh, some guys, uh, former players, uh, Feder Tutin, you know, we kind of, you know, whatever, Christmas, New Year's, you know, we, uh, Rafi Torres, I shoot a few texts here and there with them. Uh, you know, that's probably, uh, I don't know who else, uh, those names don't, don't coming up that much, but, uh, you know, those guys I, man I mentioned are uh, the guys that I uh, usually, you know, uh, at least, uh, you know, wish the New Year's or, you know, talk to them how they doing it, something I see, you know, but mostly we are all retired, so there's not much to talk about them kids and all that stuff. So uh, same all uh, with everybody, but uh, it's always uh, nice to see. That's why, it's, again, it, it would be great maybe to meet them and maybe you have a whatever alumni game or whatever, just to meet for whatever something that would be, but uh, maybe someday. Yeah, maybe someday indeed. And uh, as you said earlier, it kind of really stinks that the whole world's going through this pandemic right now. And it's really kind of, you know, it's messed up a lot of things. And it includes this 20th anniversary season and some of the celebrations uh, that we could have. And the fact that we're not doing this with you in Columbus and we have to do it like this, it stinks. But, hey, it's better than nothing. And, again, it's great to see you. And, hey, Rusty, the 25th anniversary is not that far away, right? So oh, maybe yeah. by then. Maybe, yeah. That'd be cool. That would be very cool. Thank you so much for taking your time to do this uh, with me and for our fans. Uh, everybody loved you when you were here. They still love you. They wanted to know what was going on. So thanks for filling everybody in. Again, personally, it's great to see you again and talk with you. And I hope that, uh, if not before, when it gets around to 25 years, that you'll be back here in Columbus so we can do this in person. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me, Bob. And uh, uh, to uh, the fans of the uh, Columbus and the Blue Jackets, uh, you know, I had a good time and I wish they would, they will, you know, soon come back to, uh, uh, to the building and, uh, support them. The team is doing good. So, uh, cheer, cheer the Blue Jackets on and, uh, have a good time whenever uh, it will be available. And, uh, I had a good time and, uh, I say hi, uh, to everyone, uh, that, you know, uh, remember me as a, as a player and, uh, I, Maybe someday uh, we'll, you know, see in person each other. Yes, we all hope so. There he is, the guy that was the first ever 
first round pick of the Blue Jackets, Rostislav Klesla with me here today on Hockey From Home. It's been presented by Kemba Financial Credit Union. Thanks to Rusty for being here. Thanks to you for being here. Until next time, I'm Bob McElligot saying so long.